Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, New Life. Welcome to New Life Community Church. It's great to be with you this morning uh, to share the Word of God with you. I believe God's got a word for us to encourage us uh, as we enter something like, is it 104 or 105 days of lockdown now? But just to cheer you up, it's only 172 days to Christmas. How's that? So <laughs> that's cheered everybody up, I'm sure. Uh, but I just want to speak to us this morning that uh, that we need to forget, need to remember in these times that we are God's uncommon people. We are God's special treasure. Now, a lot of people, when they say, when when people say that we are God's uncommon people, what they write down that or what they think of is, well, that means weird. No, it doesn't mean weird. It's speaking about God speaks of His people being distinctive, set apart for Him. So we are called to be God's special treasure in the earth, in our communities where we live. I just want to share something about a guy called Admiral McRaven. I don't suppose many people have heard of him, but uh, Admiral McRaven. And this was a great military man. He is a great military man. He's alive today. He's been an admiral for 35 years. He's a commander of the Special Forces. Uh, and he was part of the planning for the raid on Osama bin Laden, if you remember that, a few years ago. He's a very clever man and he gave a speech to a load of recruits. He was speaking to new recruits about joining and training for the Special Forces. And he said the Special Forces, the training's quite stiff, it's quite hard and difficult. They have to learn how to function underwater, they go on long runs, there's obstacle courses... And towards the end of this training comes a week and it's called Hell Week. That sounds enticing, doesn't it? It's called Hell Week. And in that last week, the, the trainees get about five hours sleep. They have to run over 200 miles. They, they swim for miles. They carry boats. All sorts of stuff goes on. It's a very physically and mentally challenging week. And as he addressed these new recruits, he said to them that this process starts off at about 150 people and pretty soon it's narrowed down to about 50 people because what the training reveals more than anything is character. It reveals character. But right at the centre of the training ground for everybody to see is one of these. I've, I've pinched this from downstairs. Pinched this from downstairs. Right in the centre of the training ground hangs one of these course I hope we can see it. it's a bell and all you had to do during this training time if you'd had enough if you was fed up if you couldn't take any more all you had to do was <coughs> ring the bell no one would ask you any questions as to why you'd rung the bell you just had enough and you'd quit so all you had to do if you rang that bell There was no more getting up at five o'clock in the morning for long runs. There was no more being dragged out in the middle of the night to swim in cold rivers. None of that would happen. You just had to ring the bell. And you were done. And what the Admiral said, what the Admiral said to these recruits was an amazing statement. He said to them, if you want to be a person that changes the world, don't ever ring that bell. So why have I told you that story? Because lots of us in these uncommon times, in this lockdown that seems to go on forever, are feeling anxious, are feeling pressure, relationships have been pulled apart, all that we, even the shops is a challenge, all that we know has been stretched to the limit. And it can be so difficult for us to deal with. And I believe that Satan and the enemy of the church and the enemy of the people of God, he would want us to ring the bell. He would want us to say we can't cope. He would want us to say this is too much. Don't ring the bell. Be encouraged this morning. Be encouraged this morning. Be strengthened in the Lord. I've been so encouraged at this time. I had so many people have stepped up in this fellowship Great, so much grateful to the digital team for all they've done and the, those people that have, have uh, given to the midweek inspiration and the, the life group leaders and the intercession team. And There's been some amazing stuff that's been going on. It's been so wonderful. They've all been brilliant at staying connected 
and keeping together as a family of God. And we need to be encouraged to do so. I just want to read you the scripture before we get into the main scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57 and 58. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, so that, my beloved brothers, you can be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labour is not without fruit in the Lord. And this scripture describes God's uncommon people, his special treasure. The Bible has a word for it, it's called faithfulness. Even in the storms, even in the difficult times, even in lockdown. We may be in lockdown, but God's not locked up. The Holy Spirit is not locked up. Because God's people don't draw strength from what's on the outside, we draw strength from who is on the inside. So I quickly want to look at a familiar passage. This man in the Bible is a, is, was a real strong man. And we often picture Samson as this man full of muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. But we'll see from this passage that he wasn't. The Bible doesn't describe him with that. The Bible says he didn't look different than anybody else, really. So if you've got your Bibles, I hope you have. Judges chapter 16, verses 4, 4 to 6. I'm reading from the NIV translation. Judges 16, verse 4 to 6. Some time later, he, Samson, fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength, and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. And each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Tell me the secret of your great strength. And how you can be tied up and subdued. And subdued. What's the secret of your strength? If he was full of muscles, I don't think you'd have to guess, but he wasn't. You know, it doesn't seem to be. And in the story that I was told at the beginning, about, shared about that, those special forces and the training that tested these men and women to the limit about their strength physically, mentally, emotionally. But our battle today is not about that. Our battle at this time is about our families. It's about supporting each other. It's about the battle for our communities, the battle for businesses and jobs. It's not about bombs and bullets, but our adversary wants to target you and me with anxiety, with frustration, with feelings of even being overwhelmed at times. Pressure that comes emotional and mental. And these things come to us all at some point. And they certainly test us all. I think all of us can say we've been tested during this lockdown at certain points. I know I have, so. Because just like Samson, we look just like everybody else. You look the same in the queue at Tesco than everybody else. But it'd be a great testimony to the goodness of God in my life and in your life if to our neighbours and to the people out there that could say, why isn't your life falling apart? Why didn't you ring the bell? What's the secret of your strength? So I want to start by saying, if you'll note that Samson and Delilah, they was in the valley of Sorek. Sorek means, that valley the name means Sorek, means fertile, fruitful, a fruitful place. There were trees that grew there that bore great fruit like berries. So Samson was in a, great, a valley of great potential, a place of great potential, a place of great fruitfulness, but also in that valley of Sorek, Samson was in a relationship with a woman called Delilah. Now, I think at times, poor old Delilah's got a bit of bad press, I think. Uh, there's nothing in the Bible to suggest that she enticed him with favours or uh, she, did, she did nothing, nothing's recorded about any sort of physical attraction was going on, but we do notice that Samson fell in love with her. And the name Delilah means this, to diminish, to bring low, or to impoverish. So the pitch here is that we can be in a place of great potential. We can be in a place of great fruitfulness. And in that valley of Sorek, and yet we can keep in relationship with stuff that can diminish my life. Things that can bring my life down, not build me up. We can be in that place where those both things are happening. There's some stuff will always try and diminish your life and my life. 
So Delilah realised Samson had strength, but she had no idea where it came from. So she kept asking and pestering and mothering, tell me the source of your strength. Because for every single one of us, I believe, each of us, we've all been in a place where we've been let down, where we've felt betrayed, where we felt abandoned, we thought people would be there for us and they wasn't. And those can be difficult times. And those experiences can diminish us. Even in a fruitful place, those things can begin to diminish us. So the key for all of us is simply this. What's the source of our strength at this time and going forward? What's the source of our strength? What happens when a virus comes? I think I spoke a, a, a couple of times ago. What happens when the battle chooses you? What's the source of our strength when the virus comes? That I can't control. But it sure can diminish us as we've all experienced, if we don't know where our strength is. Because of Samson's relationship with Delilah, she kept searching and trying to get to his strength. Some of us this week, or over this period, have cooked more than we've ever cooked. We've cleaned our house more than ever. Our garden looks the best it's ever looked. But internally, we can feel pressure. We can feel diminished. Many people are still not working. Many are not sure about the future. Been stuck in together for weeks. And life has a way to try and diminish every one of us. But we, people of God, have a secret source of strength that is so powerful. And in our passage, when Delilah kept asking Samson, tell me the secret of your strength, it reveals two simple truths. One, Samson did not have to guess where his source of strength was. He knew exactly where his source of strength was. And two, it was obvious Delilah did not know where Samson's strength was. Some people may see your strength. They see how you handle yourself and have no idea where that strength comes from. So they ask you, why haven't you rung the bell? Why haven't you given up? It's a great opportunity to live our lives out, as we spoke before, to live out Pentecost in our daily witness to the goodness of God in our lives. In a different Bible passage, the prophet Isaiah writes to a nation under assault by another nation called Assyria. These were difficult times. So we've something in common with them at this time. They were locked down. They were experiencing days of fear and anxiety. In one day, they were locked down. They had no idea what the future would bring. So Isaiah writes to this nation, to them, and he says this. Isaiah 28, verse 5 and 6. At that time, or another translation says, in that day, in that day, the Lord of the heavenly armies will become a glorious crown, a beautiful diadem for the remnant of his people, and a spirit of justice to the one who sits in judgment, a source of strength to those who turn back the battle at the gates. So what day? What day was Isaiah talking about when God spoke through him? What day? That day. That day of distress. That day of viruses. That day that we feel pressed and overwhelmed. In that day, when we're not sure about the future, God says in that day, God Almighty himself, not some propped up idol, not some false God, but in that day, God Almighty will do two things. He will be a crown of glory and a crown for his people. So what does that mean to us? Well, that crown of glory is referring to uh, when people, uh, when the army had gone out and the people of, of God had gone out and fought battles and they'd won some battles and as they came back, they would come back in that place of victory and they would receive these crowns upon their heads. And God's saying to me and you, when we feel at our most overwhelmed, when we feel at our most fearful about the future, God wants to put that crown upon our head. God wants us to, not to ring the bell, but he wants us, to, he want, God wants to stand up in our Inner man, stand up in the spirit that's within us and say, we are the people of God. We are strength comes from him. We won't be overwhelmed. He empowers us to live that life as, a, as an overcomer. And God puts a crown of victory, that victory that Christ won upon the cross. God puts that crown of victory upon our heads. 
as someone who's been through some stuff. We had a, at the beginning of the year, remember we had that meeting when we talked about the crowns that, that Christ has put on us, the crowns that are for every believer. Well, God puts them on his head. He's not stopped giving them out. For, peop- for people who've been through some challenges. And this, fr- this crown, was, this wreath has a key phrase in it, what Isaiah pointed out, to the remnant of my people. At this time, of course, we're speaking to the tribe of Judah. But God always keeps for himself a remnant. But this is what it means. That's what, this is what that means to me and you this morning. Everything we thought was lost, God always has something left. He's a God of what's left. He always has something left. God always leaves something. No matter how dark it seems, there's always some light for every generation. God always keeps for himself a remnant. Always a little bit of oil in the jar for the uh, widow of Zarephath. That little oil that fed a whole village. Always a little boy with a lunch that God can use. He always keeps for himself a remnant. Gideon, thousands left him. Thousands walked away. And God kept a remnant for him that would win the battle and see God's purposes fulfilled. I believe that we can trust God at this time. God is not in lockdown. We can trust God with our lives. He's still the source of our strength. I believe God still wants to bless what we have left. What does that mean for me and you this morning? Well, I believe God wants to bless what we have left. I believe God says, don't forget to celebrate what you have. Celebrate friends. Celebrate family. Celebrate your health. Celebrate the church family of God. Let's not fret about what we've not got. Let's celebrate what we do have. When I feel I've got nothing left, when I feel I've got nothing, God declares himself as the God of the remnant. To me and to you this morning. Just look at what God says. He says he will be the spirit of justice. He will be the spirit of justice, Isaiah says. To them who sit in judgment, a source of strength I will be to them, says God. And a source of strength to them that can turn back the battle at the gate. They are not separate things, but two parts of the same thing. The spirit of justice that judges right and wrong, that gives discernment. Because can I say this? God doesn't deal not really with right and wrong. That might come as a shock to some people. God doesn't really deal with right and wrong. What God deals with is what brings life and what brings death. Into my life, into your life. So God wants to be in a place where we have to discern, is that bringing life to me? Or is that bringing death to me? We have to discern and learn to discern that by the gifting of the Holy Spirit. And I believe God wants to give us a spirit of justice to discern because the spirit of justice speaks to us about our lives and our values. What's our values? In the old days, many years ago, we used to use a plumb line. A plumb line to set the standard. And from that plumb line... Because that plumb line was unchanging. You can build anything around that. And our plumb line for the people of God is the word of God. That's our plumb line. That sets our values. And God helps us by his spirit to live that out. But if our plumb line, my plumb line and your plumb line is always moving, it's difficult to build anything of substance in our lives. So the spirit of justice deals with the standards and the values of our lives and what I have in my life and your life. And God gives us a spirit of strength for the battles. So if God is a source of our standards, if God is a source of the values that we have in our lives, he will also be the source of our strength. If the culture, if we allow the culture to set our standards, then we can't and values, then we cannot go and ask God to be the source of our strength. We can't allow our friends to decide the plumb line for us. Our friends to decide what's life and what's death. And then ask God to be the source of our strength in the day of the battle. God says, even in these difficult days, we have to keep God as the source of our strength and the source of our life standards. And if he's the source of our life standards, if we value him and obedient to his word and listen to what God's saying by his spirit, then he will be the source of our strength in the battles that we have to face. Because most of us, including me, still want to do things our own way. 
still want to do things how we want them to do. We still want to set our own standards. But I'm normally, I'm not that strong. I'm not that strong. I need a God who is so much wiser than me. I need a God who, who can be the strength in my life. I need a God who's been around longer than I've been around. I need a God who sees the end from the beginning to be the source of my values and the strength in my life. And this God wants to be the source of all our lives. In these days, let's not be a people that ring the bell. I believe Jesus is still building his church. The doors may be shut, but the church is alive. And Jesus is still building his church. He's still preparing us, even at this time. When this is all over, God is the source of our strength to those who turn back the battle at the gates. Now, I just want to say quickly, in the, in the cities of that day, to explain what has been spoken of here, in the cities of that day, there was an outer wall and there was an inner wall. And these were the gates. And in between these gates, so even if the outer gate was breached, the inner gate could still be, there could still be a battle at that gate. But at the gates, contracts, covenants, decisions were made. Battles happened between the gates. So the prophet Isaiah declares to us, you don't have to let your house, you don't have to let fear get in your house. Are you guarding your gate? Are you on guard at your gate? And God says he will be the source of your strength to turn back the battle at the gates. King David was well known to us. We normally speak of David as a giant slayer, which he was, and the, the writer of many psalms, which he was, uh, and being a great king, which he was. But then we also read about the other side of David in, in 2 Samuel chapter 18. What of time to read it this morning? Go and read it yourself. I'll give you the passage later on. David's son, Absalom, was a good-looking guy, long flowing hair. And David knew he had trouble in his house. He didn't turn back the trouble at his gates. He forgot that God, God was his source and his strength. And Absalom did something dreadful to his half-sister. And David did not bat, fight that battle at the gate. He forgot that God was his source and his strength. And later on, Absalom killed his brother, his own brother, and then for four years, Absalom stood at the gates of the city, proclaiming as people came to see King David, proclaiming this, if he was king, Absalom said, if I was king, I would do things far better. You'd be far better with me as king. But if you want to go and see that old guy, David, go and see him. And eventually, of course, that went into full-blown rebellion. And there came a battle. There became a battle. There became revolution. And Absalom rides out, rides out during this battle and his hair was flowing, long flowing hair. And his hair as he rode past got caught in a tree. And he was hanging there in this tree, helpless. So what was notable on the outside, what looked great on the outside, handsome, long flowing hair, was also that that made him vulnerable. And Absalom was hanging there in the tree and Joab, one of David's men, one of David's men of battle, came along and ran him through as he hung there. You don't need Game of Thrones, just go and read the Bible. Some great stuff in the Bible. And when news of this reached David that Absalom was dead, David weeps uncontrollably. Not just about his son, but I believe that he had seen this rebellion growing. He hadn't been to the gates of his house. He forgot God was the source of his strength and the source of his values. And David did not correct anything at all. He let that pass. He did not battle at the gates of his house. You can read the next bit in 2 Samuel 19, verse 1 to 8. I won't read it this morning. And Joab then, this guy who had run Absalom through as one of King David's men, he walks into the king's chambers and says to David, Today you've, you have humiliated your own men, your whole army, because you're weeping over a man who hated you. You're weeping over a man who wanted nothing to do with you. It was in a place of rebellion, who brought division, who brought discouragement. You're weeping over him and you've forgotten those who are for you. There's a preacher in there somewhere. You've forgotten those who are for you. 
So Job says to the king, I tell you this, if you don't get back into the gates by midnight, you won't have an army left. So the Bible says, David get up from his weeping chair, the chair he was been weeping in, and he went back and sat in the gates. He went back to God as the source of his values and the source of his strength. And when David got back to the gates of the city, the Bible says his whole army came to him. And when David took his place, all the strength he needed to rule and protect a whole nation came to him. And I believe God is saying to me and you this morning, take your place, guys. Stand at the gate of your house. Stand at the gate in your house. Let the values of God rule your life. And the strength of God will allow me and you to fight those battles. Some years ago, we received a prophetic word for this house at New Life Community Church. If you remember, it, it was about chess pieces. It was a real powerful prophetic word. But on the back of that prophetic word, what often gets missed is it said this, that New Life Community Church would be the gatekeepers of this community. That we would be the gatekeepers of this community. So we need to take our place at the gate. We need to understand that God is our source. Not our cleverness, not our good ideas, not our plans. God is the source of our values and our strength for the battles that we're going to face, that we're facing now and the battles, the battles that are coming up. In these days of great pressure, homeschooling, all stuck in together, virus updates, warnings, the pressures are there for us to see every day and they can distract us from taking our place at the gate of our house, the gate of our lives and the gate of our fellowship in our church. Just read you two scriptures to finish with quickly. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 to encourage you, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And Ephesians 6 verse 10, finally, finally brothers, be strong in the Lord, relying on his mighty strength. We serve a mighty God. Be strong. There's financial pressures, there's spiritual pressures, there's emotional and mental pressures that we're all going through at this time as this thing drags on. But I believe God's saying to each and every one of us this day, don't ring that bell. Don't give up. God is still your source. He's a source of your strength. He's a source of your values in life. And if we look to him, we will be strengthened and we will turn back the battles at the gates. I hope you're encouraged. I hope God's encouraged you this morning by his word. I pray for over each family. I pray the peace of God be upon you. I pray you would know the strength of the Lord in your life. You would know, just turn to him and he will be the source of your strength for any battle that you're facing. So God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Keep safe and keep connected in the family of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.